And when we're talking about mechanical systems and we're talking about those big issues of comfort and efficiency and flexibility, those really play themselves out through a series of smaller issues. Uh, this is just a small list of them, but uh, some of those issues might be the idea of bringing in fresh air. Certain situations I'm going to be required to bring in actually pretty large percentages of fresh air. Even a typical office space, there's a fairly hefty requirement for bringing in fresh air. That makes sense if you think about it. You're trying to help people be productive. You're trying to help them stay awake during the afternoon. You're trying to help them uh, kind of uh, have that sort of sense of freshness. Well, the only real way that you can do that is by making sure there's fresh air mixed in. Now, we don't generally want to mix in 100% fresh air. We're usually going to have some of the existing air get reconditioned and some fresh air get mixed into it. Uh, the percentages might change, but if we did it as 100%, well, man, that's going to be very inefficient. It means every time in the middle of winter, we're trying to heat up all the way from whatever the cold air temperature is outside to kind of bring that up to that, uh, to that uh, reasonable level to be able to condition and, and put it into the space. So that would be very inefficient but it might provide very important fresh air aspects. So you could imagine for maybe a hospital, instead of having recycled air, where we're taking air from the waiting rooms where there's a bunch of coughing and sick people, and we're reconditioning that with a tiny percentage of fresh new air, uh, you know, we may actually only take a little bit of return air and actually have quite a bit of fresh air coming in from outside because we just don't want to have that contaminated air uh, sort of finding its way back into the system. So it depends on the situation. In other scenarios where there's not so many people, there's not so many people breathing, there's not uh, a lot of equipment that's uh, sort of contaminating the air, uh, I may have a very small percentage of fresh air being uh, a uh, brought into a process because it's just not as important uh, as it is in, a, in an office setting. And for a residential setting, um, typically we just have a few people in any given residence. And so there's not uh, that situation where it's like a, an assembly space or a big office filled with people. Uh, this is just a few people in a fairly large space. Uh, and so we have to bring in fresh air in order to make sure that it's uh, safe and clean and healthy for everybody. But it's not like we have to bring in 80% fresh air or anything like that. You know, so you're talking fairly small percentages, but those small percentages become important in terms of keeping everybody uh, healthy and, and awake and, and uh, satisfied. We're also constantly exhausting air. Every situation is exhausting the air. We have bathroom exhaust, we have kitchen exhaust, we have just general exhaust from office space. Uh, so we have a whole series of different ways that we're pulling air out, we're uh, getting rid of air. And that's gonna uh, force us to bring in new ventilation air. We're gonna be finding other air to replace that. If we're being very smart, we're finding a way to have the exhausting air be near the ventilation air so they can exchange heat with each other so we can kind of preheat the, the new ventilation or pre-cool, depending on what season it is, that new ventilation air. But the idea that we are exhausting air out and bringing air in, uh, bringing that fresh air in, is an important concept and will show up in pretty much every, uh, every situation. Sometimes uh, we'll have uh, very, very tight buildings and very sort of uh, uh, tightly organized mechanical systems. And in those situations, we might have uh, the exhaust systems and, for example, the bathrooms uh, on a cycle or on all the time so that they just naturally have some uh, uh, percentage of the air that they are pulling out of the building. We might have that just straight out of the office spaces. We might have that out of the kitchen where it's just sort of on a certain setting and is pulling air out at a certain uh, pace. And then we are equally bringing in air to supplant that uh, to give it that fresh air quality uh, at the same pace. So sometimes that exhaust system is built into uh, the way that the overall mechanical system, the HVAC system, is meant to work. Uh, and that can be a very effective uh, situation, especially in a very tight building. In some situations though, older buildings where there's less tight of a building, is air leakage, is just air coming in generally, uh, or in just sort of less uh, controlled situations, 
uh, it may be that you actually don't want that kind of system. You want to have those exhaust systems be on personal control. Uh, like I walk into a bathroom and when I turn the light on, the exhaust fan starts. Or uh, when I turn a special switch on, the exhaust fan starts. And then when I turn it off, it stops. Right? There's going to be times when I want it to be sort of on its own and part of a system. And there's going to be other times when it's really more about uh, just uh, sort of personal control and sort of the use and the expectation is that as people use it over time even though it's not on a constant system that it would do the need that the constant system does by just the sheer fact that people turn it on and turn it off sort of irregularly over time that'll give us a chance to exhaust enough air and bring in some some new fresh air but uh, that idea of exhaust air will show up in essentially every building type even something, in fact, importantly, something like a parking garage, uh, even if it's an open air parking garage, I may actually have uh, exhaust systems to help push all that bad air out so you don't get congregations of air sort of stuck in, in stairwells and things like that uh, that can cause uh, serious uh, problems for folks, especially in a panic. Uh, so the air out and in is definitely going to be part of that sort of understanding of that mechanical system. And then obviously we're talking about comfort. I already mentioned the idea that the temperature and the humidity level are sort of tied together. You can't really think about the temperature without also thinking about the humidity level in a space or outside. So uh, the sense of comfort really comes from understanding both of those and making sure that our systems are working uh, to deal with both. So, for example, uh, if we have an air conditioning system built into uh, our mechanical process, well, that air conditioning system is going to uh, naturally dehumidify a bit. Uh, and that's a good thing because when we're trying to bring the air temperature down in order to make something feel more comfortable, it would be a mistake to leave the humidity level up. You want to bring the humidity level down with the air temperature. Uh, if you don't, it has this sort of horrible clammy feeling. It's really unpleasant. So with the temperature and humidity, we think of those things together to the point that if we were uh, having an air conditioning system that dropped the uh, temperature down, if we didn't also have that dropping the uh, moisture level down, it would feel really terrible. It would be a horrible sort of clammy feeling. Uh, so that would be a very unpleasant aspect to, uh, to the process. And you need to therefore think about both of those things together and how they work together. Plus, uh, if we're talking about efficiency, we can't really be thinking about efficiency uh, if we're not thinking of the two together because actually taking the moisture out of the air is one of the more expensive parts of the process. So we need to have both levels of energy understood in order to really be able to talk about efficiency. So that uh, whole humidity level, taking that out, well, that's all part of that sort of question of condensation. You know, uh, dehumidification is creating condensation. Condensation, if we're not careful about it, we have have uh, cool air and warm moist air. The warm moist air when it gets near the things that are uh, uh, the cool things. Uh, so I have a uh, outdoor space that's very cold and I have a cold window and I have warm moist air inside that space. It's going to want to leave condensation behind. So the condensation issues show up in the air conditioning. They show up in heating situations. Uh, condensation is very um, useful in terms of creating a dehumidified space, or if we need to, actually adding uh, moisture into the humidifying into the space uh, to make sure that uh, things don't dry out too much or art doesn't get damaged, things like that. Uh, so the, that uh, level of humidity with uh, the way the condensation will, will start to drop out, but that condensation can be really problematic and start rotting and causing damage and making things slippery. So there's a lot of potential problems if we're not really being careful about how all these overall systems work. And so that's why we have vapor barriers. When you start thinking about a vapor barrier, and I say barrier, when I was in school, we always called them vapor retarders. I think they used to be called vapor barriers, and then we started calling them vapor retarders, and then they seem to be calling them vapor barriers again. Um, so the idea is that you're stopping moisture from getting into the wall before it becomes condensation. Because once it becomes condensation in that wall, uh, you're going to have rot and damage and mold and all of those things. So all of the, the wall systems are actually part of our overall mechanical systems. So the mechanical systems overall 
Uh, there's a lot of different parts to it. We could go on with this list for uh, a long time, but you start seeing how these little moments actually have pretty big impact, and this would be the spot where we have a chance to review them and make sure that they're fitting in with the project goals and that uh, we're not doing anything that's going to make things super inefficient and therefore bust our cost analysis, and that we're actually meeting all the code requirements that uh, we have set forth.